Sundance late last week announced that in lieu of having everybody fly out to Park City, Utah, which nobody wants to do, they're actually going to show a smattering of films in theaters around the country. And one of those theaters is our local movie palace, the Texas Theater. And when we found this news out, I had to put in a call to our good friends at Aviation Cinema because joining us via Zoom right now, he might look like he's at the Texas Theater because he always spends every waking moment there. It's Barack Epstein. Hey, Barack, what's going on, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? How you doing? Long time no chat. It has been, well, obviously it's been a year since I've seen you, actually. I think the last time I saw you was the uh, the Kevin Smith, uh, Jay and Silent Bob reboot night. So yeah, that's that been over a, that a year. Was a, that was a fun night. Two sold out shows one night. Uh, a lot of people there that night. It's crazy. And, a lot of and, bar sales. And, it was. And uh, thanks uh, also to Mark for helping out that night with the crowd control. Ner I call it nerd control. Uh, that, was, that was one of that was very educational for me because I realized just how old I was by the end of that night and how I yeah. can't really do a lot of those things anymore. But yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. Yeah, I wish when, when one day we'll do them again. <laughs> well, before we do that again, um, fantastic news where the Sundance Film Festival 2021 is employing a batch of satellite sites and the historic Texas theater is one of them. So talk about how this all came about. Well, yeah, the, the, the Sundance uh, Film Festival this year, obviously they couldn't do their normal uh, festival. And a few months ago, they, they, they did decide that they were going to switch to um, sort of a satellite uh, model, uh, meaning that they would pick uh, venues in certain major cities uh, that were, you know, art, art house friendly and partner with them to, uh, to, to, to present certain parts of the Sundance program there. So we're handling uh, about 12 or 13 screenings uh, at the Texas Theater as the official Dallas uh, venue. Um, a couple of them will be outside at our Texas Theater Sunset Drive-In, and then several of them will be inside at uh, very limited capacities uh, following all the uh, very explicit uh, cinema safe uh, guidelines that the National Association of Theater Owners has uh, implemented. And we're following those uh, and, and taking them even further by only limiting the room to about 16% capacity, but just under 100 people per show. Um, uh, we've also added bipolar ionization rigs on the HVAC units, and we've cranked up our uh, our, our uh, HEPA filters. So we're doing we're even doing a lot of stuff at the HVAC level to make uh, to make things safe. Um, but it, you know, but at the same time, um, we are offering some uh, options for our drive-in as well, opening night and closing night. So you've got a slate of films that's really killer. And obviously the one that sticks out is Judas and the Black Messiah. Mm -hmm. My question is, how many of the films are specific to the Texas satellite and how many of them will be shown across the entire film festival network? Well, the way that they're doing it is that every, uh, that there is um, a virtual premiere for every film. Um, and once the virtual premiere happens, there will be concurrent satellite screenings at certain venues across the country. So I, I'm not, I think Judas and, and, and the Miss Black Messiah and Messiah is playing at uh, maybe eight or so venues. Um, you know, several, so a lot of them are playing between six and eight venues. Um, and that's, around, on, that's on January 29th, right? Uh, that screening is on uh, February 1st, actually. Oh, okay. Um, perfect, perfect. Um, we've also got three films uh, that, are, that have Texas ties that we're showing on, uh, on Sunday, uh, January 31st. Uh, we've got a film called Cusp, it's a documentary uh, made in Central Texas, uh, a film called Jockey by uh, Dallas filmmakers, uh, the guys who did Transpicos a few years back, that was a big hit at Diff and, and played theatrically. Um, and then uh, The Blazing World, which uh, was shot in around uh, Austin uh, by a Fort Worth uh, f a f a female a filmmaker, it looks fantastic. Um, so three of those films, all three playing that Sunday and we'll have a, a filmmaker uh, in attendance for some of those as well. Uh, so we're excited about that. How much of the tickets go to the Sundance organization? How much stays at the Texas? Well, actually, the way that Sundance is making it work is that um, uh, they're letting the venues decide. Uh, they, uh, so the venues, they're, they're kind of uh, giving some suggestions on, on, on ticketing uh, and they're letting the, the theaters take all of it. And then and if they want to, uh, to share with any promotional uh, or, or, or co-presenters, uh, they're able to. So that's so it's, it's great that they're doing that. 
I mean, the reason I ask is because every theater in America is hurting so bad right now. And I know yeah. that um, I, I can't even imagine what you guys have had to do to keep the lights on in the joint because yeah. it's it, not everybody's that lucky. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. And I think that that's part of it. And they, and they realize that and they want to help a lot of these, these theaters out. Um, you know, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's other initiatives happening right now to, to help theaters that I don't know if you want to get into, but there, there are things in, in that will be happening soon. Uh, but yes, it's been, it's been obviously uh, a rough year for, for indie theaters or at theaters at all, venues at all. Um, so, so yeah. Um, we don't want to watch everything on HBO Max. We just don't. It's it's not yeah. good. Mark, well, spe- spe- speaking of which, uh, yes. Ju- Judas and the Black Messiah is is actually the the follow up movie to Wonder Woman, uh, to uh, from uh, the Warner's uh, HBO deal, uh, and it comes out actually only two weeks after our screening. It comes out for February twelfth. We're, we're trying. We're asking nicely if if we can get to show it at our drive in because uh, we're we're actually the demand for it is through the roof. We're actually already sold out for our Sundance screening, uh, so we're trying to see if we can bring it back for some encores uh, during its theatrical run well i just wanted to say uh kind of based on what devin said a second ago i can think of no place better for something like this the sundance uh deal we're talking about i can think of no place better in dallas or in the dallas fort worth area than the texas theater because i mean there's so so much great history behind that and to have this be the place where you get a chance to see those films that so many people otherwise wouldn't have an opportunity to see. I, I think that's a really great partnership. So congratulations on it. And and I, I really hope this opens the door to just do much, much more of this because this is very exciting for the local area. Yeah, and I, it's one thing that Sundance is communicating uh, is that, uh, you know, hopefully they'll go back to regular at some point next year. But I think that they do, now that they've kind of established a, a way of working with um uh, cinemas like like ours and ones all over the country that they will have uh, some more partnerships like this uh, ongoing I, I think they will yeah absolutely well, um, you mentioned that judas and the black messiah was sold out where can people pick up tickets to any of the other screenings that are happening just on our website uh you can also navigate to it from the sundance website if you click live screenings but from our website the texas theater.com we've got a tab on there for the sundance screening very easy to read yeah yes thank you uh i hope that's a, a good comment uh, it is well it mark's is. eyes aren't as good because he doesn't wear glasses so no know, it's it's, a, it it's amazing how some people have such a hard time buying movie tickets and you've got it laid out here so that. beautifully uh, mobile view and everything yeah it has oh, yeah. all the times all the dates everything so it's very easy to read yeah thank tell you. mk that she did a good job putting the ticket site together it's great <laughs> thank you for that for those comments and i will I, tell my, I, my web guy as well i did want to ask because i know Devin and i both are really excited about judas and the black messiah and i mean how could you not be the trailer is easily one of the most amazing trailers I've on seen. side note that guy whoever cut that trailer has got to get an award it's, it's such incredible a good it's incredible <laughs> and, and the second trailer it's, it was was just as good like they, they yeah. did a really good job but is there a film maybe outside of that that you're particularly excited to and looking forward to seeing? Yes. The other film besides the Texas film and besides that and besides all the others, I'm, I'm a massive fan of uh, British uh, genre filmmaker Ben Wheatley. Uh, and we are showing his new uh, horror, a pandemic horror film, which is called In the Earth. Uh, and there are still tickets available for that. That's uh, January 29th, uh, Friday night show. Uh, I don't know much about it yet. There's a very small teaser trailer that we've got up on our website that he posted. It's about 15 seconds long. Um, but uh, if you're fans of, 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 of Wheatley's uh, stuff, uh, like Kill List or High Rise, um, very macabre uh, British themed horror, uh, you know, you, you'll like this one. I'm excited about it. Is that indoors or is that in the drive-in? That one will be indoors. Okay. Yeah. And that's on the 29th at 9.30. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, Mr. Wheatley will not be coming from London to the screening, but uh, I'm hoping that they give us uh, a, a, an intro by him that we're going to play. They, they're about to send us a bunch of content, actually, that I think and, is going to include some stuff like that. And he can't, and he's not coming because he can't come. Like, I'm, I'm sure he would be here if it was possible for him to leave, you know, UK. But yeah, that's, yeah. but still, that's very cool to be able to see that. So yeah, yeah it's, it's cool that we're, you know, we've got a lot of films by new filmmakers or, or second time filmmakers or very young filmmakers. But then we have films like this that are by guys who have 10 major movies out there. So uh, I think it's a great, it's a great program. Cool. Well, we have the uh, link up at bigfilmshow.com so you can check out all of the Sundance 2021 satellite screenings 
at the Texas Theater. Barack, it's always good to see you, man. And it's been far too long, like I said. And I cannot wait to see you again. I'm actually gonna I'm gonna come out to that end of the earth screening. I'm I'm awesome. going to I'm gonna break my own rule because I think by that time I'll no, I won't have my first shot yet, but I'll be masked up and yeah, I'll, I'll look up, like a plague fun. victim myself. It'll be great. Yeah, just, co uh, just cover yourself in popcorn from the Texas Theater. You'll be fine. Like uh, I don't do that anyway. <laughs> hey, um, can we talk about our uh, renovation that we're working on? Oh, oh yeah. No, we didn't even talk about the second screen yet. Absolutely. Damn, son. Very yeah. excited. Yeah, so um, we're we're also in the middle of, of a renovation at the Texas Theater. It's something we've been working on for, for, very, for several years. But this year, for pandemic reasons, we were able to um, kind of buck, buckle down and, and, and get everything lined up to make it happen because uh, we were already mostly closed. Um, and uh, so we're in the middle of construction right now uh, on the second screen that we're using the old balcony that no one really has been in in 40 years. Uh, it's been unused. Um, and we're building a, a 170 seat auditorium up there. So it's not gonna be small, it's gonna be a nice big screen. Um, and we're actually also creating a balcony uh, row for the downstairs auditorium. We're actually adding seats for the main room. So from up here, you can see we're adding a row right here. <laughs> That's um, awesome. Uh, so you'll be able to sit in the balcony of the Texas Theater uh, and watch a movie downstairs as well. Uh, and then there'll be another movie up there. So we're hoping to have this done uh, in May of this year. So we could use uh, potentially for our, our film festival in June. Uh, and um, yeah, we got 30 guys in there every day, uh, nine to five, uh, knocking stuff, knocking walls, adding walls. We're actually uncovering stuff in the mezzanine. Uh, the One of the old office spaces uh, that no one has seen in, in other than if you'd been to a meeting in our office, we not. It, it was actually part of the original mezzanine uh, lobby space years ago, and we're going to turn it back into a kind of a, a lobby bar upstairs. Uh, Have you so done any kind of Geraldo Rivera unearthing of anything in a vault? Is there something <laughs> that's, that Robert we Wolonsky that. will go? This happened in 1939. Yeah, we actually did that a few years ago in the safe room. Uh, we did that. We did a whole. <laughs> we did a whole thing on that. Uh, but uh, I remember I, that. I remember that clip. I yeah. remember that too. Yeah. We're actually expanding the safe room, actually, if you've been up there. Uh, you know how small it is when we do parties up there and stuff. We, there's a wall up there that separates the safe room from an office room back there. Mm -hmm. And we knocked out that wall as part of this. So the safe room will actually be a, a bigger multifunction party room, art gallery, all sorts of things. So we're making all sorts of improvements. And, you know, when people come this summer, we'll have, we'll, have, we'll hopefully we'll be able to give them, you know, double the movie uh, options and, and, and double the event options. So as, 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 as a, uh, as a tech question how are you hand i mean do you have enough room for field of view to be able to get a good size projector i mean uh, yes. a projected image and yes. you know how much room is between that front row and the uh, the screen itself yeah no it'll be it'll feel you'll be a little closer to the screen than you are downstairs we actually have probably a little too much room downstairs because of the stage uh so upstairs will be a little bit more like a traditional movie theater in terms of where you where the front first couple rows are into the screen. Now, I don't want the first row to be like, you know, back in the day, your UA, we need to have to do that. Um, so, you know, the, the front row, it'll be big, but it won't be uncomfortably big uh, it is gonna be the goal. Uh, and, and and I feel like, you know, when, when, when you get in there, you're just, it's just gonna be um, a really good size screening room. It won't be like you're going into a room that's been cut in half and cut in half again. Um, the cracker box. Yeah, it won't feel like that. The, the, the ceilings are tall, the, the walls are wide, the screen's going to be big, um, you know, so uh, we, we really hope it'll feel like a, a nice, uh, big, and at the same time, kind of cozy uh, screening room. You, what is the film you want to show in there first? Oh, uh, you took my question. Damn it, I'm sorry, Mark. Well, hey, I mean, but I, hang I, on, I, we'll edit it. Hey, Mark, what question <laughs> do you have? Hey, Brock, I have a question. What's the... <laughs> Hey, Brock, I have a question. What's the first film that you have in mind to show in the new auditorium? Or have you thought about that yet? Well, two, I can answer that two ways. One, we may be doing the Smoke Cliff Film Festival screenings in there. And two, uh, I've already started talking um, to our Tuesday Night Trash programmers and my friend Dan, who runs the uh, Hollywood Theater in Portland, who has a massive uh, 35 millimeter Kung Fu collection. And we're, oh, talking, about, right. we're talking about doing a 35 millimeter uh, Kung Fu series uh, there uh, this summer. 
Um, so if, 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 if you, if you don't know Dan, he's the guy who's been on Quentin Tarantino's podcast, uh, most of the pandemic talking about Kung Fu. And he was on the, he was on Riz's, uh, thing this summer, uh, pre presenting Kung Fu movies. Um, so he is the Kung Fu cinema, uh, master and, uh, we're working on something with him. <laughs>